I have been asked to start doing some Bible studies online and um, I don't know how that's going to go over or not. But because a lot of people don't want to have a, a long thing, I'm going to do some short ones. I love getting into the prophetic. And when you get into the prophetic, especially what is going to, where we're about to go into, you, you have to layer it. And that's going to take a little longer. But let me just kick this off with something that is very well known or should be very well known to us. But if you're like me, dear Lord, you need to be reminded and that is about the power of our words. The reason it is so powerful, let me just say that s someone very, very well said that the kingdom of God is voice activated. That is absolutely the truth. Why is that? Because everything in this realm was created by the voice of God. God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. He created the animals, the, the uh, foliage. He created the water. He created the sky. He created the earth. Everything with his words. Everything except humankind. When it came to us humans, he did different. He formed us with his hands and he breathed his breath, his spirit into us, making us of the God kind of creation. So being that we are created in his image and in his likeness, then we have the same ability to create with our words as God has. Because no other, none of the animals have the ability to create speech. They make sounds they talk to us for sure but they cannot create language and speech uh, parrots can mimic but they don't create speech and think on their own and express it with their own words only humans do that dear lord it's just obvious that we are the only creation the god's most magnificent creation on the planet with the ability to cause our lives to 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 have prosperity or failure much by the words of our mouth now let me just kick it off with uh proverbs very very well known verse in proverbs proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 that says death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof let me read it out of the passion the passion says your words are so powerful they will kill or give life, and the talkative person will reap the consequences of whatever they say. The Bible also says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That is Jesus' own words. Let me read that. That's in Matthew uh, chapter 12. I'm going to start with verse 34. And Jesus says, you generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things and i say unto you that every idle word every non-productive word that men shall speak they will give account thereof in the day of judgment for by your words shall you be justified and by your words you will be condemned. Oh my gosh, we need to learn this. I mean, our words are so powerful as the Bible says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Matter of fact, in James chapter 3, he likens the tongue to a bit in a horse's mouth that can turn the power of a horse any way we decide. And even greater than that, he likes it, our tongue, to the rudder on a ship that even though it's a tiny instrument compared to the size of the ship, it can direct the direction of the ship. And he says that is what our tongue, our power, the power of our words do. So when we say stupid, idiotic, things like ah oh, that just scared me to death you going to town oh I'm afraid so uh, you're gonna start this new deal oh I'll probably fail I'll probably go bankrupt ha 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 how stupid we kill our futures or we build our futures the things that we say to our kids well that kid I mean he just dumb in a bucket of rocks really don't these things that we laugh about as a joke we don't mean it but 
It is words, and words are have spirit power because that's how we were created. In the image of God, our words have power to create. And so whether you and I mean that or not, it goes out into the atmosphere as a force, and it makes our future positive or negative. It makes uh, for positive results or negative results. Now, there's... To bring it into today, really, uh, I was, you know, you can't even listen to the news or debates or anything right now politically without just uh, either you're sucking it up like a dipstick or you're checking it all out. And so much of what is being said is lies. I mean, total lies. And so what What about that? What, what do we do about when people are just lying and lying is it ever gonna is it ever gonna um come around to to them to have you know a recompense of it yes now i want to read uh psalms 12 about this out of the passion and uh, it says help lord save us for godly ones are swiftly disappearing where are the dependable principled ones they are a vanishing breed everyone lies Everyone flatters. Everyone deceives. Nothing but empty talk, smooth talk, and double talk. Where is the truth? I know the Lord will not deal gently with people like that. And you know what? If that's you and me, we don't want to be in this ki in this shape. I don't care if you're a car salesman. Keep your, your language true and accurate. You cannot just, well, that's just part of business. No, that's part of deceitfulness. And uh, it is going to have its recompense. It says you will destroy, the, talking about the Lord, you will destroy every proud liar who says, we lie all we want. Our words are our weapons. Boy, isn't that the truth right now in the political realm? I mean, listening, you guys that know me, you know where I stand on this. I am a patriot and an, uh, a lover of America and, and, and who God has set up for our government right now, and our that is our President Trump, because it's God that set that man up. You may not like the man, but it is the most stupid thing that anyone can do to vote for a person according to how that person's personality pleases them or displeases them. You don't vote on personality, dear heart. You vote on on the platform. What is their platform? I don't care how smooth and how nice someone appears. When their platform is aborting babies, it's murder. And God is not for it. When their platform is socialism, it will destroy this nation and bring us down like Venezuela, who is one of the highest productive nations uh, a few years back. And now people are literally starving to death because of socialism. And when we listen to people with smooth talk, but their platform is evil, it is going it, to... It, it wrecks families, it wrecks economies, it wrecks nations. You cannot put your vote to something that to someone who is smooth and pleasing to you. Because let me tell you, the devil is slick and he can even come as an angel of light. You have to pay attention to the platform and what they're really saying. And they say, it says, our words are our weapons and we won't be held accountable. I'm telling you, there is so much lying going on, especially in the left because they don't have anything to offer. And so all they can do there is, is deceive. And it says, who can stop us? May the Lord cut off their twisted tongues and seal their lying lips. May they all be silenced, those who boast and brag with their high-minded talk about doing whatever they want. But the Lord says, now I will arise. I will defend the poor and those who plundered the oppressed and the needy who groan for help. I will arise to rescue and protect them for every word God speaks is sure and every promise is true. If you want the blessing of God on you in this day, in this hour, in any day, in any hour, you and I must regulate our heart because I guess can't start with my mouth. Oh, how many times have y'all done this? Well, I'm not going to say a thing. 
and that lasts for maybe two minutes and I'm blurting my stupid mouth off, you know, so if it's boiling in my heart, it's going to come out my mouth. The Bible said, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so I can't just control my tongue. I have to guard my heart. Proverbs says, above all else that we guard, guard our heart, for out of our heart, flows the issues or the forces the power of life why because what bubbles up in our heart comes out our mouth and that is how god created everything but he's always good he's good the bible says absolutely not a shadow of darkness or turning in him he is good well i'm not so good and so i have to protect my heart because if i go to thinking evil evil is going to come out my mouth and evil is where my feet are going to go and so I have to protect my heart by not listening to the things that oppose what God is saying. There's so many things being said now that are opposing what God is saying. I'm telling you, God is not through with this nation. We are not going under. God is, has, by his goodness, is giving America a reprieve. And he's bringing truth and light and justice to, to, to prevail. Let me, let me just say this. The Spirit of the Lord... Has, here I go with the prophecy stuff. I love uh, the prophetic of where where God has taken us. Um, this, but the Spirit of the Lord has has spoken in my heart that uh, as it was in the book of Esther with Haman building the gallows to kill a righteous man, Mordecai, on, hang Mordecai because Mordecai was righteous and that stood against his plans and purposes for evil. He wanted him dead. And so he went to the king and lied and got the king's uh, uh, permission to kill Mordecai. Not only Mordecai, but all of the Jews. He wanted all of the Jews destroyed. He wasn't just satisfied to kill the man that he hated. He wanted to wipe out the entire Jewish nation. So he built these uh, gallows high up in the air so that he could hang Mordecai and all the people would see it. And then he wanted a civil war uh, against all of the Jews and have them destroyed. Well, what God did was amazing. The book of Esther is just the most amazing book. <laughs> it cracks me up. Right before all of this is really going to come to a head, it just so happens that God caused the king to have insomnia one night, and he can't sleep. And so he calls the uh, reader up to read the most boring stuff that's been happening in, in the kingdom, and uh, hopefully he can go to sleep, but he doesn't. And so it lasts all night, and right before daylight, the reader, uh, whatever they're called of the, in that day, he gets to the part where this Jewish man saved his life. And the king said, did we ever reward that guy? And the guy looks in there and goes, nope, nothing was ever done for him. And he goes, we can't have that. He's got to be rewarded. And it's right now, it's morning. And, and who is coming in? Only God can do this. This is so awesome. And this is what God is, uh, is doing right now in our, in our time. He's strategically, he's always been strategic. God is so strategic. And, uh, and he's strategically doing things that only God can do. So right about that time that the king is going, man, this dude's got to be rewarded. I don't know what to do for him, but we got to do something. And then his good buddy, oh, wicked Haman, comes walking in about that time. And the king goes, hey, hey, what can we do for the guy that I want to honor? And, and Haman, in his arrogance, thinks, well, <laughs> got to be me who he's talking about here. And so he goes, well. He does what he wants done to him because, see, Haman's real agenda was to sit on the throne and be king himself. He said, dress this man in your royal robes, put your crown on his head, place him on one of your horses, and have one of your most trusted men to lead that horse throughout the city, proclaiming this is what happens to the man that the king favors. And the king goes jolly good idea hurry up and go do this for Mordecai the Jew and 
And Haman, I mean, can you imagine? He's probably like the wicked witch of the West who gets water thrown on him and is melting away. He just wants he just wants the ground to swallow him up about that time. Oh my God. He's got to be the one to go put the the robe of the king on his enemy, the man he hates most of all, put the king's crown on his head, put him on the horse, and he's got to lead him through the city going, this is what the king does for the man who he, who he favors. And oh, he goes home just mortified, mortified, you know. Well, it gets worse because the very plan that he had for the Jews falls back on himself. Not only did Mordecai not hang on Haman's gallows, Haman hung on his own gallows, even Haman's sons. And the Lord has been speaking to me in this time to not fear what the enemy is saying about America, to not fear what the uh, evil, corrupt uh, uh, men and and political places and high-ranking places are planning on doing that they are building their own gallows but it will turn and they will hang on their own lies they're gonna hang on their own lies so it's not just about them though bring it back to me it's about me let me let let my heart align with what God is saying in this day in this hour let me hear what God is saying and, and speak that over my life, over the life of my family, and over this nation. It is so important that we align our hearts and our mouths to what God once said. The book, the, uh, the Bible in, uh, shoot, I don't remember it's, it's where, it, where it is, but it's, it's in the New Testament, obviously. But it says, whatever is good and righteous and just and true, think on these things. Why? Because whatever I think on goes into my heart, and whatever comes into my heart builds and comes out my mouth. So if I'm thinking negatively, I'm going to speak negatively, and I am going to reap the benefits of death in my life because I'm speaking death with my words because I'm meditating on negative things. You, and in a world that is loaded with negativism, negativism, is that a word? In a world that's loaded with negative stuff, <laughs> uh, we need we have to build a positive. You have to you have to go against the flow, and you've got to have a walk with God. To be honest with you, you're not going to do it without it. You're not going to do this without the Spirit of God. And you're not. And it isn't just because you're a Christian and a believer. You're going to have to spend time getting to know the Savior who rescued you from death. And begin to hear his words, know his heart, and align your heart and your words accordingly. God bless you. hope this has been a help. If it is, y'all want more, we'll do more. We'll see.